What's going on? I'm John, and in this writing vlog, I'm going to be starting the rewrite of my epic fantasy novel. That means that I'm going to be reading through this first draft, taking notes on the major things that I want to change, and going through and fixing those problems. So that's what I'm going to get started on right now. What's going on? It is, well, <laughs> it is not NaNoWriMo anymore, for me at least, because yesterday I was looking into those backstory scenes that I would be writing, and I realized that there were only enough scenes for less than one day of writing anyway, so I decided that I'm going to incorporate those when I actually do the process of rewriting, rather than knocking them all out now and having a video that's literally just about one day during my Camp NaNoWriMo. So as I started this day, I was confronted with the realization that I don't really know what to do next. I mean, I know vaguely, I know that I'm going to rewrite, I know that I'm going to rewrite multiple drafts and that's going to get me to the point where I realize that the book is actually in a good enough state that I can go into self-editing and then actually getting an editor. But as I've never actually done the rewriting process, I actually had a lot of questions about how the heck you're supposed to do this. I vaguely have the idea that you're supposed to read through a little bit and you know, note down some ideas about what is working and what is not working in various scenes or whatnot. But as far as specifically what I'm going to do as part of this process, I realized that I don't have any idea. I started off just reading some articles and stuff, but I didn't really find it very helpful. So I went to this YouTube video by Abby and K.A. Emmons, as everybody is probably aware of since Savvy is one of the bigger channels in the writing community. And I actually do think that her process makes sense. What she was talking about is basically looking through each scene, reading through the scene, and then writing down a synopsis of what happened in it. And then afterward, writing down what you want to change about it. What do you want it to be in this new version, basically? I think that that makes sense. I also think that it makes sense to look at the story overall as well. I did outline in the beginning, so I do know that there is a general structure to the story overall. However, I did change things toward the end of the story for at least the first character, Ella's arc. I'm going to continue doing a little bit more research here because frankly, I don't really know <laughs> what to do yet. I'm gonna create my own little process and I'll tell you what that process is and then I'll actually go about doing it. What was your step-by-step -step process for that? That's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I started with looking at the good bones. Okay, so this was a little bit of a weird start to my day because usually, for, well, at least for the last month, basically, I've been waking up and from four to six or whatever, I'm usually just writing like a madman. <laughs> and, well, it's already six and I haven't written anything today. And I haven't even started reading my draft yet. But I did figure out what I'm going to be doing at least. At least for this first phase, this first like revision, rewriting sort of phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through for the first character alone. And just look through their story. What are all the problems? And note down the biggest of the problems. Which problems will be the ones that affect most of the story? Like for instance, in Ella's arc, I know that things have changed at the end in a big way because I decided I was going to have her learn the magic earlier than I initially planned and because of that I have a bunch of scenes in the book where she doesn't know it and then suddenly she knows it so <laughs> that's a big problem that needs to be fixed but I imagine there's even bigger ones like deciding on her actual personality and making sure that that's consistent throughout the entire story. I'm going to be reading through and trying to note down the problems that I'm seeing and sorting them basically by which problems I think are the most important to fix and then going through and trying to fix those problems. Okay, so I just read the first scene in Ella's character arc and it's actually good. <laughs> Although I anticipate that there will be many, many more that are not good at all. There are definitely parts that I need to change about it. Anyway, I want to continue reading through and taking some notes and trying to figure out other things I can fix. Okay, it is 734 and I have gotten to page 35. I've read quite a bit so far, but I am starting to feel a little bit tired. It's already kind of late and normally I would have taken a break by now, at least a short one. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break 
and go outside for a bit, and then I'm going to come back and continue reading and taking notes on what I've got here. Okay, so I've already read all the way past the break into two, and I actually really like the beginning of this story. I think I did a great job in the beginning. I like the personality that comes through with Ella's character, her voice, and her kind of banter with her friend Xander. I definitely like what's going on here in the beginning. I do think there's some parts that feel a little rushed. There's obviously some stuff that I just didn't like. There's definitely a lot of sentences that just are not good <laughs> like these sentences are hard to read or they just have a weird form to them where it seems like i changed half of the sentence midway through writing it and it doesn't fit the previous half of it but overall i do feel like the story itself has some really nice bones in this part i think that the character of ella is coming across and i like the way that she's portrayed here in the beginning hopefully i will continue to carry that along throughout the rest of this so I'm going to get back into the reading right here. Okay, it is 837 and I have reached 70 out of the 133 words. And I'm going to be taking another break. First of all, because frankly, my eyes are getting tired. <laughs> I'm really not used to reading a book in this form for so long. They are getting a little tired, but I am getting some good ideas of what the story is so far. I actually do think that this one is put together pretty well so far. I'm almost at the midpoint here, and it actually feels like it's a pretty good story. There's definitely stupid mistakes that I made, like there's some sentences that are just atrocious. But as far as the bones of the story, as far as the actual plot, this is good. I did note some places that I'm going to be adding in the other subplot that I wanted to introduce, which is her learning the magic of the soldier, basically. And I think this is going to be really useful because it feels a little bit like it's too rushed, like the events are just happening so quickly. And I think having some moments that are a little slower like this will help it feel a little less abrupt. That's what I'm noticing as far as overall story stuff. Otherwise, I noted down a bunch of little things that I'm doing that are going to need to be fixed. I do think that there's going to be some bigger story level problems after the midpoint and when we get into the bad guys close in, but I'm not going to worry about reading those right now. To be quite honest, since it's still July 29th and I still have a few more days left in July, I'm thinking that I'm going to take this reading process a little bit slowly, really just enjoy these days and kind of take a short rest before I get into the next bout of rewriting and going for five plus hours every single day again. So I'm actually gonna call it here for the day. I did do a bunch of research in the morning that took away a lot of my time. So tomorrow I won't have to deal with that and I'll be able to finish this and potentially get into planning out the rewrite as well as maybe even starting it tomorrow. But for now, I'm gonna call it a day and I will see you back tomorrow to continue with this process and to start actually improving the story. Okay, so this is day two of the fifth week of my novelist's apprenticeship, and I'm back again to work on reading through the drafts I've created for the characters and then rewriting them to improve these drafts. The first one that I've been working on is Ella's. I am already 70 pages in out of 133 pages. That means that I have less than half to read today and to take some notes on to try and see what I can learn from and what I need to change. I'm at the midpoint right now, so we're going to get into some of these bad guys close in scenes soon. And if you remember from my previous video where I was actually writing this character, that is where things were starting to get a little bit difficult, where I realized that things were getting a little repetitive and that I might need to make some changes. So, so today I'm going to be looking at some of the parts of the writing that are perhaps not as good and taking down some notes on things that I need to improve about the storytelling in this area and what I think I can do to fix these things. Let's continue with this reading and I will get back to you with some notes on how this is going and what I'm planning on doing. Okay, so it is 5.33 and I've gotten to 106 pages out of 133. So yes, as expected, the bad guy's close-in was a little messy. There are definitely some plot holes. There are some things that I introduced that I'm thinking I don't want to keep. For example, I introduced this sort of subplot about her losing touch with her passion for sword fighting and for becoming a soldier and all that stuff. But I don't necessarily like that one because I don't feel like it makes sense given what's going to come later that she would lose touch with it. Yeah, she's so committed to it and desperate to learn it 
that I don't really think it would matter even if she didn't feel you know, passionate about doing this activity anymore. So there's a few scenes that I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with them instead that work introducing that bit. But I feel like the second half of the second act actually does still have good structure. It does make sense. It's just there's like a few things that are just holes there that don't really fit and that I need to find something else to replace them with. I do feel like Ella also, we haven't gotten as much of her personality since the beginning of the book. We were shown a lot of her personality in the beginning, like her banter with her friend Xander and that kind of stuff, and her struggles with her, you know, teacher Ophelia, who teaches her all the feminine arts and whatnot, and she doesn't really like listening to. And this actually brings back one of the things that I think was a problem, is that she's kind of isolated. As soon as we get past the B character moment, she doesn't have any other people around that she's really interacting with that much. She has the rival, she has her mentor character, the B story character, but otherwise there's really not that much in the way of relationships and that means that there's not moments for things to kind of slow down a little bit and it does it means that there's not moments for her personality to really show and because of that I think that we kind of lose touch with some of the fun personality elements that I had in the beginning so I want to try to find a way to include that back into the second half of the second act. Overall, I do like the direction this is going, but I do feel like it's lacking in a few areas. Those are the big things that I think are going to be wrong with this story and that I need to fix. I think that this next part I'm going to read is a little cleaner, but I'm going to take a very quick break and I'll come back to read the rest of this in just a second. Okay, so I just finished with all my notes. It ended up being about, well, only a little bit more than two pages. So overall with this experience, there were a lot of small things that stood out to me, of course, but also some big story level things. So I think the three biggest things that I need to focus on, and because these are all kind of tied together, I can't really rank them in any sort of specific order. The things are one, to make sure that I'm actually getting the bad guys close in to a better state, especially toward the beginning of the bad guys close in. Two is adding in some new sorts of characters for Ella to become friends with, for her to have more of like banter with, for her to actually express her personality. Because in the beginning of the story, I really liked the way that she was communicating with Xander and getting to see their kind of friendship and their dynamic and her sort of personality was really nice and I think that, that should continue along the length of the story. Obviously, toward the more serious parts, we're not gonna get to see that quite as much, but I do think that in the fun and games and parts of the bad guys close in, that should definitely be an element that's included. Also, in the fun and games slash bad guys close in, I need to add in the subplot of her learning the magic. Yeah, originally I was planning on her learning the magic really late in the story, and that was going to come much later, but because of the way that I escalated things toward the end of the bad guys close in and the climax, I need her to actually understand these abilities and be able to use them earlier than I was initially planning. So I need to introduce her learning this magic, and I think it'd be useful for multiple reasons. One, to set up the ability later, but also because the scenes right now are, there's a lot of action-packed scenes, there's a lot of scenes that are very fast-paced, and they come one after the other, and there's not that much downtime in between. There's not that much of like slower scenes to give the reader a chance to kind of like you know, <laughs> catch their breath, basically. And I think that this, along with adding some sort of subplot that would allow her to meet other people and befriend some other people, would allow me to include some of these downtime moments to let the reader, you know, catch their breath a little bit. So those are the main three things that I want to focus on with the rewrite. And I think this first rewrite is mostly going to be geared toward the fun and games and the bad guys close in because of that. And the first thing that I'm going to do is focus on replotting out some of these scenes me adding in new scenes to the fun and games, adding in new scenes to the bad guys close in, replacing the scenes in the bad guys close in, and figuring out how I'm going to include all of these elements. So that is what I'm going to be doing next in this story. So I'll be back in a bit with figuring out this plotting so that I can add in these new elements and fix up some elements that were just not working that well. So that's all I got for today and I will see you tomorrow. Okay, so yesterday I figured out the big things that I want to accomplish in this rewrite, and today I'm going to actually start adjusting the plot, adding in new scenes, replacing some, 
to try and make these changes actually the reality. So that's what I'm going to focus on right now. Okay, so I just did quite a bit of re-outlining, basically. I don't know if that's a word. I basically tore apart the entire bad guy's clothes in and changed everything. There were a few scenes that stayed relatively similar to what they were, but for the most part, the bad guy's clothes in was completely changed. I was able to do all three things by adding one scene to the fun and games and basically completely revamping the bad guy's clothes in. I added one scene just to balance it out with that one that I had to add to the fun and games, but overall the bad guy's clothes in just completely got changed. There were two scenes in the end that stayed relatively similar, but all of these other scenes were completely different. So I do think that this is going well. I think that these scenes make more sense. They progress the story in a better direction. And I like the progression of the bad guys closing more. There's definitely more variety. Also, rather than introducing a new character like I thought I was going to do, instead, I made it so that she could reconnect with the character of Xander. And by doing this, it allows me to set up a scene that occurs later on with him. That knocks out one of the things I was trying to get across, which is like giving her more opportunities to show her personality, basically. And some of the other bad guys closing scenes that I added also do that as well as well as adding a little bit of conflict with her rival, just a different type of conflict. And I also added the subplot of her learning this specific magical ability, and it starts in the fun games, but carries over mostly into the bad guys closing. So I do feel like this is going well. So what I'm gonna do is go in and learn from the problems I had with the reimagining of the first character's arc of Pramana. I wasn't able to actually use the scene sequel structure and the beginning, middle, and end to get a really good idea of where the scenes were going before I wrote them. Rather than letting that be a problem again for me this time, I'm going to go through all these scenes I just added and add in the scene sequel structure. I'm going to add in the beginning, middle, end descriptions, and this will help me stay really focused during these scenes and make sure that I'm writing them in a way that is going to be really effective. So I just finished up adding in all of the extra structure information, the scene sequel stuff, the beginning, middle, end information, and I also tagged each of these scenes to let myself know which ones I need to rewrite in full. I'm going to look into my notes a little bit more and see if there were any other scenes that I wanted to add or change or somehow work in. And if it makes sense, then I'll add those to the rewrite as well. There were actually two more things that I wanted to work in, two sorts of scenes that I wanted to add slash potentially include within other scenes. One of them has to do with the state of Ella's family, which will help motivate some of her actions. And the other has to do with setting up some of the ground rules around the military camp. I'm not sure if it makes sense to set them up early, because if I do set them up early, then people might forget by the time we get to the scene where it might be relevant. Actually, I don't necessarily need to worry about it. In the previous scene, I'm going to be referring to that because two of the characters are going to have to have a disagreement about it. I don't necessarily need to worry about that one. But I do want to find that first scene that I was talking about. I do want to find an opportunity to include something about the state of her family. Uh, I'm going to see if I can work that into one of these early setup scenes. Okay, so I figured out how this is going to work its way in to the story, but I don't think that I'm going to have to rewrite these scenes or rewrite an entire scene here in the setup to include these details. Rather, I'm just going to work in little hints toward this into two of the scenes that come before the catalyst. And this will serve the purpose that I was trying to get after. Okay, so I'm gonna call it here for today. I've now figured out all that I need to do in order to get started on this rewriting. I know exactly which scenes I'm going to have to go about rewriting. It's really not that many. There's maybe one and a half days of writing if I do 5,500 words a day. So I really don't have that much to do as part of this rewriting phase, but I'm going to go through with this rewriting and then I'll see after that what other stuff I want to dive into, what other stuff I want to start on fixing. I'm going to stop here for the day and I will talk to you in a bit. Okay, it is day four and I'm back for starting the rewrite of Ella's arc. I have nine different scenes that I want to focus on rewriting. And I've already kind of made space for them in the new version of this draft where I'm going to rewrite these various scenes. Some of them I'm leaving some of the information because not everything's gonna change, only slight details. But for most of them, they changed completely. So I just made space for 
a complete rewrite. So actually what I did was I deleted all the text from the scenes that were at least partially written because I don't want to set myself back by however many words just because I'm deleting and replacing different parts of text. I'm just going to start from a blank sort of slate basically. Oh, and it's important to note that I completely removed Miksa's story from this, the original first characters. So that doesn't exist in this anymore, which is why the word count has sunk so much. Anyway, I have 96,690 words. So to reach my 5,500 goal for today, I need to hit 102,200 or so words. So that is what I'm aiming to reach. Let's just get started because this is going to be an intense day of writing. So it is 627 and I have just reached 98,829 words. Just just over 2,000 here for the day. Some of them are really not written words because right now I'm in the process of rewriting the midpoint and really a lot of this scene is going to be the same. It's just that I'm raising the stakes a little bit more. I'm making the outcome a little bit harsher, a little bit more realistic, I think. And so the beginning of the scene is relatively unchanged. I did want to change one piece of dialogue and it was one of the things I jotted down when looking through my notes because it kind of removes a little bit of the tension by answering this question for readers. So I'm not answering the question and I'm just going to continue on into this scene. So right now I'm just gonna take a very short break and I'll be back to continue writing in just a bit. Okay, so it is 7.47 and I have reached 100,699 words. So I'm just over the second of the 2,000 words for the day. This is going very quickly, and part of that is because the last scene I was working on was not actually a majority of writing. A lot of it was actually me copying stuff that I had written before, changing it up slightly, and putting it back. And that's because the midpoint largely didn't change. All I did was really try to raise the stakes and give her some sort of idea of the consequences of the path that she's taking and the potential dangers that it poses to her. So I just finished writing the midpoint scene and I started with the first the bad guys close in scenes afterward. So I'll be back to this in just a little bit to continue writing the bad guys close in scenes, rewriting these scenes. I really think this is going to be so much better than it was last time, so I'm very excited to continue. Okay, so it is 9:18 and I have just reached 102,249 words. Okay, so today was not exactly the same as a day of drafting. It's hard to compare the two as far as writing speed because one, today I was doing a little bit of copy and pasting as well as writing things from scratch. And overall, the process was very different from a normal day of writing everything from scratch. However, just to be able to compare with days this week, I was able to write 1,245 words. I don't know, that sounds like a decent pace to me. <laughs> anyway, today was a good day of writing. I wrote a bunch of different scenes. I was able to write one of the fun, yeah, I was able to write one of the fun game scenes, as well as write through the midpoint again, write the first of the bad guys close in scenes again from scratch, and write the second of the bad guys close in scenes again from scratch. So tomorrow I would like to work on the remaining bad guys close in scenes. There's five left to go. As far as observations from, from today, I did really enjoy the rewriting process. It's nice because I'm able to include some of the stuff that I already like, and now that I have a better understanding of the story, I'm able to write these scenes better than I could have the first time around. Like there's stuff that I know about the character that I didn't know when I was first writing this. So things are changed and I think I can make a more consistent telling of this character, of this story, and just create something better here. So tomorrow, hopefully I'll be able to finish up the remaining five scenes and I will be done with this stage of the rewriting and be able to move on to even more tweaking, adjusting, and improving. Okay, so I'm back here for day five, and today I'm going to focus on continuing the rewrite. Before I get started, I do want to talk about a little bit of a time constraint that I'm facing today. So basically I learned last night that a few members of my family are coming over kind of early in the day, around 10 a.m., which means I don't really have that much time to actually get this done. Not the usual five hours that I would need 
to finish this writing, especially since I'm writing pretty much all the scenes from scratch today. So what I'm going to do to make sure that I get as much done as I can and still am ready to hang out with my family when they do come over is I'm going to tie a box here today. So instead of my usual two hour sessions and then one last session at the end of the day where I write for longer. Today I'm going to focus on just writing for time. So I'm going to write for the first two hours, I'm going to take a break, and then I'm going to write for two more hours, and when that's done then I can move on to some of the other things I need to do before they come. That is my plan here today. It is already 4.45 so it's kind of late. <laughs> so I'm just going to get started on the writing. I still have five bad guys closing scenes. We might be able to finish that today even with this time constraint. So let's just see what I can do. and. Maybe we'll finish. Okay, so it's only 6.17, and I've already gotten to 103,952 words. Writing today is actually going by relatively quickly, and I think part of it is that these scenes are pretty short. It might be that since these scenes are outlined so specifically, I know exactly where the beginning and end is in comparison to the ones that I was writing in Pramana's arc, so they feel shorter because of that. It's not taking very long to get from the beginning of the end of the scene, and I actually only have two more scenes left in this rewrite. I think that these two last scenes are going to be a little bit longer because they're a little more complex, but I'm just going to take a quick break right now before I get into these two scenes. Okay, so it is 8.20 and I have just reached 106,739 words. So today's writing was actually pretty darn fast and I finished before the time boxed deadline basically. I'm very happy to have done that because I really didn't want to have to come back and continue with more writing and then get into the reading tomorrow. I'd rather just start tomorrow off with reading through and seeing how the story flows overall again. Uh, today I wrote pretty quickly and I don't even think that this 1247 really reflects the pace because I did more copying of text yesterday than I did today and I wrote just as fast as I did yesterday so it was pretty darn fast to be quite honest and part of that is because the last two scenes that I was writing were really important and they were fun and one of them had a bunch of action which always makes me speed up my writing. The other one was very dialogue heavy but I kind of knew where the dialogue was headed in general so it wasn't too bad. So yeah I made some great progress today and tomorrow for the last day of the week before my rest day I'm going to get to read through again, take a few more notes on these story-wide things. And I really want to handle this bigger picture stuff and make sure that the whole story is looking good together before I go into some of the smaller things. But for now I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to hang out with my family a little bit and I will see you back tomorrow. Okay, so here I am back for day six. Yesterday I finished up rewriting those scenes that needed the most changes to move the story in a better direction to fix some of the problems that I was seeing in it. Now I'm going to take another look through this book. I'm going to read through again, but I want to read through for a few specific things here. First. I'm going to be reading through once again to focus on story, thinking about the story of why things, how are things working, story level stuff. And second, I'm going to be focusing on the character. How is she changing over the course of the story? How are her attitudes changing? Is her voice consistent? Is there still that consistent expression of her personality? Basically stuff related to the character and those are the main two things that I want to focus on while reading through this time. And take some notes on things that I could do to improve in either of these two areas. So for right now, I'm just going to get started on reading this new version of the story and writing down my observations. Okay, so it is 623 and I have already read through the first 70 of 141 pages. So things are going well so far. I do like the story up to this point. There are a few things that I recognize could be strengthened and they could be changed. For the better. The biggest example that I'm seeing is with Ella's motivation. She's going against the wishes of her family, the culture, society, against what everybody else would tell her to do. And I don't think it's clear enough yet to the reader why this decision matters to her so much. So I need to figure out a way to include that earlier on in the story. I also just finished reading the first of the scenes that I just wrote, the new scenes that I added during the rewrite. And this one was so good. It was the first scene about learning the magic and it was really fun. 
I want to finish the entire reading today. Since I'm just looking at story level kind of things and trying to see the big picture, I think it will help to be really focused and just read through the entire thing in the single day. So that is what I'm going to do here. And I'm excited to come back and continue reading Ella's story. I will see you in just a bit. Okay, so I just finished reading through the entire story here, and it is now 7.40, so it's been quite a while of reading, but I managed to work my way through it and take down quite a few useful notes here. I took some notes that were more like plot hole sort of things, or just like more specific things that I wanted to change, but a large portion of the notes that I took were with regard to like story level things that I need to change and character things that need changing. So one of the biggest things which I did mention before was the believability of why Ella is doing this. You know, she has this life, she starts off as like a noble lady, and she has this life that's pretty advantageous from most people's perspectives, but she's not really happy with that, and she wants something completely different. So I need to make sure the reader understands why she's motivated to pursue a completely different life than the one she has, and why she's so set on this. I don't think that it's clear enough in the beginning of the story. I think it becomes clearer, especially after the break into two, but I feel like it needs to become clearer before that, otherwise it's going to be difficult for the reader to relate to her. So that's one thing that I definitely need to work on. Otherwise, just consistency of her character and just her story arc and her character arc in general. Like, for instance, in the climax of the story, I focused more on, like, a forgiveness sort of aspect, which was good, but I think I need to pay special attention in this moment to how her thoughts have changed. The fact that she's able to act in this way, in this forgiving way, in this noble way, because of her overcoming her weakness from the beginning of the story. So those are kind of the main things that stood out to me. I think a lot of the character elements actually come out and work pretty well. I think she's a pretty consistent character. The dialogue between her and her rival, as well as her and her friend, are now more present, and it actually allows some of her personality to come out a little bit, even with um, her and the mentor character. So I'm happy that I was able to add some more of that in this draft. Another aspect of the story that I want to bring out a little bit more is that the people that they're fighting in this war, the, I call them the Nell Wessie, but I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mean to do this, but it sounds a little bit like Alethi. Anyway, basically during her childhood, she had some sort of traumatic experience with these people and basically some event that happened as she has this prejudice against them now. I feel like this could come out more in her personality and I feel like it would help build a little bit of that intrigue about why she is this way, why does she have this sort of belief, why does she hate these people so much? And I think that that would help with the believability as well, just kind of giving some sort of mystery around her character, like something is there, we don't know what it is yet, but there is a reason why she cares about this so much. And as long as I have at least like the promise that there is going to be something there, I think that people will be more willing to continue reading to find out what it is. Those are the main things that I think I need to work on in this next draft. I need to focus on some character stuff. I need to focus on really making sure that there's hints toward why she is this way, why she's so set on this path. And then also I'm going to look through specifically focusing on the character arc and important moments of the story and making sure that Ella's growing in the ways that you would expect or failing to in these various parts of the story. I'm going to be using a book that I've read and I have it on my Kindle. <laughs> I'm going to be referring to this book about creating character arcs by K.M. Whalen, and I'm going to use that to make sure the character arc is solid as well. So that's what I'm going to be working on next with this character of Ella. And then I will repeat the same process of looking through the big picture stuff before setting the book aside and working on something else in preparation for coming back and doing self-editing. So that is all I've got for now. I'm going to think about this week a little bit and see if I can't take away the most important lesson from the week and share it with you. So I'm going to think about that a little bit and I'll be back to share that with you in just a second. Okay, so I've been doing a little bit of thinking and I am back and ready to share with you the most important lesson that I learned from this week. That is the power 
of actually finishing a first draft. When you're writing through the first draft, there are definitely times where you can feel like the story is not going the way that you thought it would, where you feel like the story is just not good. Maybe you'd be better off quitting this story and starting over with something else. And maybe that is the case sometimes. But I think in most cases, it's actually really useful to finish the story. Because just by finishing this character's arc, I was able to have this complete picture and read through, see the things that were obviously wrong and make changes to them. And in just the last six days, by reading through, by making these changes, adding scenes, changing scenes, I was able to make the story so much better. And it's awesome to see how much I was able to improve the story just by doing this. So that is the power of actually finishing a story because once you finished it, even if, you know, it wasn't as good as you wanted, even if there are things that are definitely wrong, it gives you the opportunity to see the whole picture and find things that you can improve. And that is awesome because you can make the story so much better in that way. And I hope that if you are in the middle of a first draft around that midway point and you're starting to feel like your story is just not going the way you planned, then this will give you some inspiration to push through and finish so you can actually get to revision and start improving the story. So I'm curious, are you the type of writer who really likes that first draft, likes writing initially, or do you really like the rewriting phase? Do you really enjoy seeing the story improve over time? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button so that YouTube knows to share with other writers like you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm going to be referring to this book. Uh, <laughs> I could honestly just show it on the screen. As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. You fade away, yeah, 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 yeah.